This morning we're going to cover how to verify if a duplicate mismatches another column in T-SQL. And in this channel we haven't covered left joins or left outer joins very much, so I thought this would be kind of a good example of how to use it. Understand that there are actually even numerous ways of how to uh, solve this problem. I actually would use no row number a couple of times. Um, but in this example we're not going to use it, we're going to actually uh, do the, the left join route. So the first thing I want to note is that we're going to be inserting intentionally duplicate values. What we want to do is we want to look if there's a duplicate value by animal, and then we want to look and see if the duplicate value by animal um, will actually be a duplicate by fur type or whether it's different. And uh, this is very important in data validation in general. Now, like I said, you can use row number and you can partition by things in a way in which you don't have to actually go a further step to actually want to go a further step. So you'll notice that what I do here, I actually am controlling for duplicates where um, you will see we have multiple values of dog, but the problem is, is that this is only going to return one set of duplicate, right? In other words, we have a dog black equals, and this over here we're joining on dog brown. Because what we're doing is we're joining on the animal, but then we're joining where the count equals C2 count minus one. Well, we know that we actually have five duplicates of dog, or not five duplicates, but basically we have five values of dogs, and we only have two values of cats. So we know that the cat is right. Um, we don't have any other cats here. So the dog, we would actually have to keep going a step further and a step further. That's one of the reasons why I suggest you know, using row number. But we could do a left outer join, and we could do check it as well, and we could do C3, and we could say the same thing. Um, C1.animal equals c3.animal and c1.cnt equals c3.cnt minus 2. So what this means is if there's a match or if there's not a match. And that's very important. The inner join is just looking for matches. This one's saying, meh, doesn't have to be a match. Okay, and so then we'll fire that one away. And so the reason why you'll see that is because so on the inner join, we see it comes back with cat, but notice it actually has null, right? Because there is no, we are selecting star here. So it's selecting star from the first table, it's selecting star from the second table, and the third table. Well, animal is, I mean, cat is found in both of these two tables, but it's not found in the third. So what it does is it just returns null. Whereas dog, and by the way, we could keep going a step further. And in fact, let's just go ahead and prove that because there are five values of dog. So let's just do C4, C4, and then C4 minus three. And we see cat continues to be null. Now I'm going to remove uh, this one, just to give that was just to demonstrate. Now, let's suppose we wanted to see where there's not a match. And again, if you're fairly confident, this would work if you're fairly confident that you know um, that there's only one set of duplicates. Then I could say where C1 fur type does not equal uh, C2, fur, uh, C2 fur type or C1 fur type uh, does not equal C3 fur type or C2 fur type does not equal C3 for type. So let's think about what we're doing here. And we're, we have to cover all our bases. Now, bases, the it's kind of a baseball uh, analogy there. If you're familiar with statistics, you understand why. We have to make sure that every single possibility is eliminated here. Because um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine where the fur type is not matched, not the actual animal itself. I'm going to scroll this down now. Okay, so in other words, what we're saying here, if C1 fur type, so we're looking for the count one, in other words, we're gonna start at one. Um, so where C1 equals the count of C1 that is equals one. And then we're saying, and C1 fur type does not equal C2 fur type, or C1 fur type doesn't equal C3 fur type, or C2 fur type doesn't equal C3 fur type. So, uh, boy, I have to call that thing, sorry. So now we see a whole, whole, a uh, whole more list of values, I should say. Um, so the list of values gets bigger, and we weren't seeing that before because we actually had five and six values, okay, of dog. I'm sorry, five values of dog. So now we have one dog, black, 
and we have two dog brown and we see that they don't equal each other and then it takes it a step further because of this left outer join and we have um, three dog black so what did it hit well one dog black does equal three dog black right so in this case c1 does equal c3 but c2 does not equal c3 and c1 does not equal c2 so you can see the logic there let's look at this next value so we have two uh, count dog brown well three is is the count dog is black and four dog is black so we have three i'm sorry we have the technically the second value in the table that would be uh, c2 right here this is c2 um, actually equals c3 but c1 does not equal c2 and c1 does not equal um, c3 okay let's take the next value so now we have three dog black we have four dog black but we have five dog brown so the first value matches the second value but the first value does not match the third value and the second value does not match the third value so why is that important i mean it, it i mean when you look at an example like this it looks stupid and simple it's like well why would anybody ever look at that well it starts getting important for data validation you can't necessarily and I, i've seen a lot of people do this especially developers so this is just an important note to make but you can't sit there and assume, or you shouldn't, I should say, assume that just because you run across a duplicate column means, oh, I need to remove data. What happens if what you perceive to be a duplicate column actually turns out to have um, uh, different data? And I'll give you a case in point. So part of being a developer and part of being a, a database administrator or anything is to catch data that looks suspicious. So again, let's suppose that you were looking at social security numbers and you were just partitioning by a social security number and then you were removing the duplicates. But let's suppose that you looked at social security numbers and you saw that for you had three values of one social security number and all three of those values had different names. That's not a different person. What do you think that indicates? Probably there's some identity theft, fraud, something going on. So if you're not curious enough to kind of explore your data set and you know not make assumptions on your data set, you you know, you will be able to spot problems like this. If you're not curious, let's suppose you just don't care and like, who cares? I'll just eliminate one of these values. That's where problems can start to creep in. And it's, it's not just simple because these are the type of things that organizations like Target face. Um, they don't really care that much about security or they don't really care that much about user data. They get things mixed up. Somebody who shouldn't have access to something gets access to something Sometimes it's because, again, what happens if the duplicate was your social security number and they deleted you and so now this other person's in the system who should not be in the system. So it's, it's important to realize that um, just because you have an ID key, and I see a lot of developers, uh, this was asked in an interview, just because you have an ID key does not mean you can go in and remove duplicates off that ID. You want to make sure that every other value in that table is a match as well. So you have a duplicate and it's a duplicate across the board. Now, that being said, this is just a great example of uh, how to you know, use a left join in the case in point, but I would highly suggest using row number instead and then partition by multiple columns.